Hi, my name is Peace. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Thank you for clicking on this video. And today's video is going to be all about how to manage finances for small businesses. I am going to first apologise for the light. I was being lazy. I didn't want to carry my ring light downstairs. And now the sun is... It's looking cute, but I don't know what it's going to be doing throughout. So I'm um, sorry about that, but I'm not going to move. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, hopefully you find this video useful. Before I start, please hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be posting every week, continue to be super transparent and sharing my journey and giving you gems. Today's video is all about how to manage your finances, being a small business. So essentially, if you're the person doing everything, including your financial management, at the end of the day, a business is an elaborate profit and loss account and if you're not profitable and if you're not paying attention to the correct numbers it's going to be really hard to scale in the long term so if you're in this for the long term these are the things you're going to really have to pay attention to and I know it's not easy because a lot of people aren't numbers people a lot of people have businesses because they're talented they have ideas they're creatives um and obviously not every creative doesn't know how to use numbers but some don't essentially if you're in a business and you want it to last you're going to have to get some sort of understanding of what you what you should be looking at. I'm quite lucky in that I am quite a numbers girl. I do work in financial services. I studied economics. I'm really comfortable with numbers. I don't love them, but I'm really, really comfortable with them and I know what I should be looking at. So yeah, I guess this is something that I haven't had to struggle with per se, but I know how important it is. And I know that this is what's helped me get to where I am. So the first tip is about paying attention to your profit margins. So I think a lot of times we can see our revenue and get gassed. And I'm telling you, profit margins is what you should be gassed about. Profit margin is a percentage rate and it's out of your revenue. How much of that is actually yours to keep? So it's how much did you profit after you pay all your expenses? And I think a lot of times people think of their profit as how much do you get to keep after the cost of making the product but there are so many other costs involved and there will be so many more costs involved as you, as you scale costing of making is one kind of cost there's also costing of selling so for example if you sell on something like shopify stripe take a cut paypal take a cut you need to think of how much it costs you to package each unit how much it costs you for paid marketing if that's something you want to look into you might see that a lot of businesses offer free postage so if that's something you want to do you also need to keep that cost in mind when you're pricing your product you're also going to want to have to leave wiggle room for discounts that like everyone loves a sale everyone loves like a welcome offer you know like get 10% off your first order everyone loves a black friday sale Everyone loves a deal, everyone loves a sell, and you're gonna to wanna to keep that leeway in mind when you're pricing your product. So when it comes to profit margin, it all does come down to your price and strategy. I think a lot of times we just look at what competitors are charging and think, okay, this is what I have to charge. But if it doesn't make sense based off of your costs, then don't do that. At the same time, you don't wanna be charging something that's like an arm and a leg different from what your competitors are charging. So then you might need to look back at your cost and see what you can cut back on or see what you can find for cheaper or negotiate down. Overall, profit margins are really just everything. And you're just gonna really wanna keep an eye and pay attention to this vital, vital, vital statistic. But overall, just pay attention to your profit margins. Make sure that you always have enough leeway to pay all your expenses and still have room to reinvest back into the business. The second area I wanna to touch on is what financial metrics should you be tracking? Like I said, revenue is not everything. Like it can be cute, it can be fun to look at, but it's really not the most important. I think it's the one that we like to look at because it tends to be the largest, but there's more to pay attention to. In terms of growing, there is more important financial metrics to pay attention to. So in my opinion, I think the most important things to pay attention to are your average order value. So this is on average, how much do customers spend with you? And you wanna be increasing this over time. Another really important metric to track, as I mentioned before, is your profit margins. I'm not gonna get back into that, but it's so important. You also wanna be looking at your customer lifetime values. So over a lifespan, how much do customers spend with you? This is really prevalent in an industry where repeat purchases are really likely. So things like clothing, skincare, cosmetics, hair, like, these are the kind of places where people will come back to and you can get really high customer loyalty. So you wanna be making sure that over time, your customer lifetime value is increasing. Even if you're in an industry where people will tend to only buy it once. So for example, wedding dresses, if everything goes to plan, should only be 
want. So for example, if you're in an industry like that, you might want to pay more attention to increasing your average order value because you know chances are a, custom, a customer is only going to come to you once. And then you also want to be looking at your cost per acquisition or your customer acquisition cost. So if you're someone that uses paid advertising or you want to start using paid advertising, you also need to measure how much it costs on average to get each customer. You want to make sure that your customer acquisition costs aren't like extortionate. Again, if you're in an in a industry where your customer lifetime value has the potential to be quite big, then customer acquisition costs, you can probably give yourself more leeway to spend a bit more because you know that once you've shown them that your product is amazing as it should be, um, then there's a chance that they will come back to you. So your customer acquisition costs, you do want to weigh this up against your average order value, but it depends on your industry. So again, if you're in an industry such as skincare, cosmetics, anything that has repeat purchases, and for example, say it costs you £20 to acquire a customer on average through paid advertising, but on average that same customer will spend £20, you don't need to be like, oh my gosh, it's not profitable, if you know that there's a high chance that they're going to come back and repurchase. So yeah, you definitely want to balance it in terms of what makes sense for your business, but it is really important to pay attention to all these different things. The next point is all about cash flow. So with cash flow, you just want to make sure that the cash is literally flowing. For example, you purchase the inventory, your customers should be buying what you sell, and then you can use that money to reinvest and purchase the inventory and it should keep going like that. And it should keep growing over time, if that makes sense. You do tend to find that when you're growing, especially if you order from abroad, this can be quite awkward because there's like a delay between a lot of these things. So you purchase your inventory, it can take how many weeks to arrive and then you're not bringing in any money so you're out of pocket and then that starts to sell and you can see that you need to repurchase but it hasn't fully sold out so then it's like a bit so that's why some people tend to use like business loans and stuff when they've got like a proven concept that people do want this thing but you just need more cash flow and that's fine but it's just something you need to pay attention to to make sure that the cash is flowing as much as possible and you always want to make sure that you have some sort of reserve like you never want to spend all your money you should treat your business finances like you treat your personal finances like you should have an emergency fund you should have a savings um you want to have a cushion to allow you to like reinvest and to allow you to counter for unexpected expenses because <laughs> trust me they come up yeah like the kind of obvious ones i just want to brush past is bookkeeping, making sure that your books are kept from the very beginning. I didn't do this and huh, let's not get into that. You want to make sure you have something like QuickBooks or some sort of accounting software because if you're a registered company, you're going to need to pay you're going to need to pay taxes and if you don't want to pay for an accountant, then you're going to need to make sure that you're tracking these things yourself from the very beginning. If you leave that too late, then you're just going to be there scrambling for all your old receipts and expenses and it's just really long. So you also want to keep your business and personal finances separate always get a business account is especially coming back to the bookkeeping thing it's just going to make life a lot a lot easier to keep things separate and to let to show you how your business is doing there are so many good business bank accounts out there like starling in the uk is a really good one you definitely want to like shop around see what's offering the best kind of deal because you do have to pay fees with a business bank a lot of times they give you like first year free but afterwards you gotta pay them fees so you want to shop around maybe ask people for recommendations see what makes sense in your country makes sense for your budget your business model and how much you're going to be spending and making for example but shop around and find a good business bank account and then yeah it's kind of like the soft skills like like i said it does come down to profit and loss the best way to profit is either by increasing your prices or decreasing your costs so you're going to want to negotiate you're going to want to shop around research thoroughly like do the work to look around don't always just take what everyone else is using there are so many options out there research 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 really really shop around really negotiate and see what you can find as the best deal in terms of price and quality for your business to make sure that you have a good profit margin and you have a good blend of price and quality because at the end of the day that is what most customers make their buying decisions based off of so you need to make sure for you you also have a good balance of the two so i hope you found this useful thank you so much for watching if you've gotten this far please let me know if you have any questions or feedback or any other video ideas please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you again next week bye